This is Randy Foster uh, from Vancouver, Canada, by way of Tokyo, Japan, by way of Victoria, Canada, and uh, from RF Music and DE and Ornaments, Little Helpers, etc., etc. And uh, much respect. What's up? Um, actually, uh, I got into DJing very gradually. Like uh, I fell in love with uh, dance music through a DJ, an older DJ who was teaching me break dancing when I was 11. This is in 1983. And uh, so I always, the DJ was always very central to what I was doing, but my first love was dancing and break dancing, b-boying, and I kept doing that for a very, very long time, right through into the 90s. And uh, also rapping, I was in a, a rap group called Sound Advice which is the precursor to uh, some famous uh, Canadian hip-hop music like Swollen Members, Mocha Only, etc, etc. So that was the foundation that we were laying, was called Sound Advice, in the late 80s and early 90s. And then um, uh, from there, I fell in love with house music through um, mixtapes that we were getting, because we were like very involved in underground hip-hop, so we were getting a lot of um, mixtapes coming just from the radio in New York and out east. And that music had, at that time, had a lot of different kinds of stuff going on. It wasn't just like strictly hip hop. There was all kinds of house music and stuff and dance music, early dance music getting played. And that stuff made me connect with the original music that I was hearing uh, with break dancing, like the electro funk and, uh, you know, uh, um, Africa Bambada and whatnot. So, uh, craft work, et cetera, et cetera. So, I connected with house music a lot more than my contemporaries. So my original way of playing records was I would volunteer after we were done our shows uh, to play records. Um, you know, the hip hop DJ would open and everything and I would try to play. I basically learned to DJ so that I could play house records. So it was like, you know, I got spit on and all kinds of shit. <laughs> and like, I used to play like, fucking Adonis and shit to like, you know, underground hip hop heads. Like, I, you know, I'd try and sneak it in. First I'd play like some Two Live Crew or something that was like fast, and then I'd play Adonis or something. Some people, you know, girls liked it, but uh, some, I got a lot of fucking heat for it. Like, uh, I worked with a lot of labels and I learned a lot of things and um, some good things, some bad things. There's some labels that I'm still working with now, like Soiree Records, Detroit put out a record on Soiree uh, in 2002. That's why I know people from Detroit. Basically, that was my introduction. And uh, I'm still working with Derek Thompson, you know, big up, drive train, Soiree, Soiree Records, you know. Uh, that's still my fam. So uh, I'm still working with those labels, but my main thing right now is on my label and building something, uh, something with my own music, taking control of my back catalog and my publishing re-putting out stuff that had been, yeah, contracts had been defunct with new remixes that I feel are uh, right for, for the releases. I'm doing the digital game. I'm doing two vinyl labels. One's called RF Tracks with uh, Prime Distribution, Big Up Spencer and Prime. And uh, we're doing that. And we're also doing another one uh, with uh, Sawyer. I, I have a hard time pronouncing the thing, but a uh, new music group and distribution uh, that Miles Surge and Donnell Knox, D Knox from Kalamazoo are setting up and uh, we're gonna roll with that. That'll be RF Limited and that's a, a will be a vinyl only label, limited run stuff. And um, you know, that's, that's where RF is right now. Both, both, okay. everything, all of it, all of it. Whatever, whatever, uh, you know, there's nobody out there I don't that I don't want to give a chance to connect with my music. Like, I don't care if it's, you know, to be honest with you, I know it's an unpopular thing and I don't think other artists should think this. I don't have, it's not advice, but personally, recently, just recently, I'm not mad at people who download my shit for free. Like, if they want it, if they, you know, a chance to connect with them, maybe they'll buy a ticket for a show. Maybe they'll buy a t-shirt. Maybe they'll be hyped on my music enough to buy something else. Or not, maybe they'll share it with their friends and they, they all go up to it, that's enough for me. Like, I just wanna connect with people through my music and adapt to the new environments and 
and keep my eye on the classic environments. I don't think vinyl's going anywhere. I'll always make vinyl. I I love vinyl. You know, it's not about it's not about choosing a side, man. It's about like navigating terrain. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what I'm trying to do. That's it. Okay, actually, I do. You know, I don't know about the whole. Like, I can't. I can't. Uh, I. I wouldn't even, I don't even think it's my place to even, you know, uh, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a one dude doing a, a part of a very big thing. So it's very hard for me to like, I'm more like a student looking for where techno should go. So it's hard for me to really like have a strong opinion. But I'll tell you one thing that I do, I do have a strong opinion about is uh, I would like to see more artists uh, say more things with techno. Like, and with music, like a lot of artists, man, right now um, are really just, uh, you know, I feel like the main message coming out of their music is like, I'm really good at making music. I'm really smart at making music. Like, listen to this music I made. It's so fucking hip and shit. It's so, it's so like uh, cutting, you know, cutting edge or whatever. And uh, which is cool. I respect that. And I know that is a big part of uh, what I do and a part of what uh, techno is man you know that's why it's a head sort of music but we can say other shit too we can say other things man we can say stuff about politics we can say stuff about what's happening in our surroundings shit that's happening to us those are the things that make that connect with people and that is the way that our audience will grow you know what i mean when we're not just connecting to each other trying to like impress you know a like Mine's the hottest stuff. I'm the most famous guy. I'm the most, I got the most, you know, I I'm, I'm using the most coolest analog gear and that's why my shit all sounds so legitimate, you know? It's like, that's just like for each other. That's just nerd shit, like, that's for each other. If we're gonna connect to real people who aren't like, you know, who aren't, uh, tech, you know, fiends like crazy for music that are just like, have jobs, you know, like, that's why uh, music is, you know, gets popular because it connects with people, you know? A lot of people think there's a huge conspiracy around it and stuff, and in some parts there, there is, for sure. But some of it is self-created because we get real pretentious about shit. You know what I mean? I, I, I think we can say some things that connect with people. Like, you know, at one time we did, man. Like, you know, inner city, big fun, dude. And people are doing it. like. Keith Worthy's album, man, Keith Worthy's new album, man, fucking connected with me, like, when I heard it, I was like, he's saying something, you know, with this music, I can feel it, like, he's saying something, you know, it's not just about, uh, you know, uh, self, you know, I'm, I'm a good DJ and this track will make everybody party, you know, yeah. Website, uh, reninfoster.com, R-E-N-N-I-E-F-O-S-T-E-R.com, uh, has, it's just like all the links to everywhere to contact me. You know, uh, you can hit me up at rf at rennyfoster.com and I'll, I'll, we'll answer your email. You know what I'm saying?